in the universe. Just think about that for a second. That's 10 with 40 zeros. Your body is full of 100 trillion cells. And, well, we'll get there in just a second. But let's just say you have a lot of protons in you, and those protons are all connected to 10 to the 40th other protons, like all the time. Not sometimes, all the time. Buckminster Fuller talked about the strength of the triangle, the strength of this structure. He suggested that things want to come into balance. Things want to come into equilibrium. And he also said that the gravitational field itself will ultimately be disclosed as ultra high frequency geodesic spheres. Which suggests that this idea that there's a curvature, there's a flow in space-time, can be more deeply understood if we look at how that curvature and that structure is forming through the geometry that is in it. Now, if space-time, as we're coming to understand because of things like the Casimir effect, the vacuum catastrophe, which suggested that there's more energy in one cubic centimeter of space, empty space, than there is in the whole universe, how is it possible that that energy can be there? How is it possible that this whole empty space can be so full of energy that we don't see it, that we don't experience it all the time? Well, we do see it. We do experience it. We're experiencing it right now as gravity. We're experiencing it right now as the density of the planet. We're experiencing it right now in our bodies. But so much of it is in equilibrium or near equilibrium. And that state of equilibrium or balance is sort of hiding it from us, right? Because it's all in triangle format. It's all tetrahedrons, and they're all in a state of almost balance. This is going to become important later, so I'm just planting some seeds. Nassim's work on quantum gravity and the holographic mass proved definitively that we could geometrically tile the surface of a proton or the surface of a black hole, and we can see the same exact geometric relationships, leveraging basically little spheres of light forming space-time, arranging themselves into natural tetrahedral and lattices in that form. And through some of that work was actually able to predict the size of the proton, the size of the charge radius of the proton, and that prediction was within months proven to be closer than any previously predicted proton radius. And it was published in New Scientist that there was a new proton radius that had been found, and it was so much closer to Nassim's observations and projections than anything found previously. So this suggests that the geometric formula, the flower of life formula, the tetrahedral geometry and the geodesic formula for actually understanding the mass energy of a giant black hole or a tiny black hole works. The physics works, okay? So it's proving the accuracy of this geometric relationship. And when we get into the scale of the universe, we start to see this relationship between different things and different elements at different scales playing out in a regular harmonic geometric pattern. And we're going to get into that in a lot more detail.